In this video, we'll look at the new utility for moving legacy deformable components forward into the new deformable component framework based on feature templates. Um, in this uh, simple example here, you've seen this probably several times around deformable components. Uh, if we add, we have a couple of these in here. There's a, a flex spring that's this guy. Um, these are an older, older one here and uh, also uh, a hose, right? And, and these are gonna be used in the context of this assembly in a couple of places. Um, these, uh, these versions are older versions. The names are a little different than the ones in this modern assembly here. So uh, if you can ignore that, we're just gonna look at uh, converting these two to the modern definition here, okay? Uh, as we look at these, the uh, deformation um, is stored, of course, in the original part are defined in the original part with this uh, little guy at the end of the model history here uh, in the original the deformable component here. Now this defines really the way that the component gets consumed and way it gets deformed as it gets put into, uh, put into a target assembly. Um, in the old framework, based on user-defined feature, these were not really editable. If you wanted to re redefine it or if you wanted to change the way it was, was defined, you needed to delete this and recreate it. If we try to edit this here, you see double-click, we'll get the properties dialog. It doesn't go back into a definition dialog here uh, to make edits. Similarly here in the hose, uh, if we, we double click on this guy, similarly, we're going to get into the properties and, and not into uh, a way to, to edit this. So this is one of the things that's nice about the new framework, right, is that these are going to become editable uh, as, we, as we go into the new framework and we'll be able to use the template studio environment to do that. Okay. Now, the other thing that's going to change is the UI for these. Uh, with this flex spring, for instance, here, uh, if we go to add this component to our assembly, we'll see here uh, and I won't bother with the constraining here, but you'll see this style dialog, right? And this is an older style dialog where there's a fixed parameters box that, that has a box, and then we'll dynamically put in these three parameters here uh, using some older style UI, right? This doesn't look like a modern NX uh, feature dialog here, and uh, and because it's not. <laughs> uh, similarly, uh, if we do the same kind of a thing with the hose, uh, and grab that hose component. This is the older one. Here again, we're going to see this resolve reference white box here. And this is common to the older UDFs, uh, user defined features. It was in deformable components and I think in copy paste feature uh, still maybe uses this, this resolve reference box. But this is a, an older way and a kind of unique way for resolving geometric references. The hose, of course, uses a, a spline to define where it's going to go. Um, and again, this is just an older interaction. It's not familiar to modern NX users. And, uh, and so this is another thing that we're gonna change as we, as we move into the modern framework here, okay? So I'm gonna undo a couple times and get rid of those. And uh, there we go. And, uh, and let's go convert these, okay? Now, if we're looking at this particular one, uh, one, one thing we can do here is, is we come in to find the utility. It's in the tools under parts and features and under deform here. And, and if you're in a part that contains one of these uh, definitions, then this convert utility will be available here uh, to move this from, as it says, uh, a user-defined feature-based deform to a, a feature template-based deform. Okay, this is going to be super fast. Uh, this is super reliable because, of course, we we it's just us. We we know what it was before and what it needs to be, and so uh, this will will happen very very quickly, and uh, and it's done, <laughs> and and this now is the feature template based uh, deformation instead of the uh, user defined feature based one, and so. Uh, immediately we can start to double click this and when we do this it'll launch us into the template studio author environment where we can start to make changes to this this flex spring dialog okay so if we do that we'll double click here oops let me double click there there we go you'll notice it launches into template studio author again we're in the new framework now just just like that and if we come to our dialog and look at this you'll see that it's switched a little bit here now to our, our modern style of, uh, of uh, expression interaction. That box that was there before is gone. Um, and so we can bring this forward into the modern world here if we want to. Thing that's common with, uh, in fact, it's one of our internal 
UI rules is that we have a collapsible group uh, inside, all parameters are inside of a group, right? And so this uh, installed height actually is, goes on the top in this one, uh, like so. And we've got a min and a max there. Uh, we can choose the order of those. If we want the min on top or the max on top, we'll do put max on top and then min. And uh, in the context of this, really these max and min are there for visibility, right? We're just seeing those. We're, we're not really gonna input a max or a min here. That's really the installed height is the thing that we're gonna change. So we'll leave the installed height like this. Right now we've, we've got that as a key in parameter. And again, in the new framework, we can choose whether we want this to be a key in or a list of choices. If there are standard sizes we wanna use, we can, we can choose to have that be, for instance, one of a, a set of standard sizes. We might say that this could be, uh, say, 100 or 150 or 200 or 250 or 300, for instance, right? Put in a list of those, and that'll give us this kind of a, a UI for, for, that, uh, for that input if we want to. Want to. Um, a scale is a, a slider, right? We can choose decimal precision and things like that. A spinner is one where we kind of click up and down with an increment. Uh, and so there are a variety of these that we can use uh, as inputs out there, right? Um, for this particular one, let's use the key in and we'll just type in a value for this one. These two though, we don't want really to change them. We don't want to do, type in a value for those. So for both of these, I'm going to come in and choose here to do a, uh, a read-only text. I could do read-only text. That'll make it so it's, it's not editable. Or we could do this as a label, for instance, right? And say here, for instance, that we want to have uh, this be a label and we'll say that the maximum length, maybe we'll throw a colon on there. Uh, just to uh, to kind of identify uh, that that's that's what that is on the minimum length here as well we'll, we'll do a minimum height and uh, and uh, actually we've got a maximum height length and a minimum height so would, that's interesting the words are different so let's do maximum length and uh, we'll change this to be minimum length as well there we go and uh, so we can make edits like that very easily and uh, again we'll turn that into a label so so this is our kind of our new look uh, our group here, I'll just name this parameters uh, just because we can. <laughs> and and this will be our new definition here now for this, this FlexSpring, right? And, and when we instantiate it, we'll see that, that we'll get this kind of, of uh, interaction here uh, in this case. So with that, let's uh, go ahead and finish this and we can save this part, right? And as we do that now, that new definition is saved into the FlexSpring here. So let's go look at that. In our assembly now, right, if we come and add that flex spring as a component, this time now as we go in there, again I'm going to ignore the aligns, uh, as we come in you'll see we get the new dialog there. And we can choose to, to set this installed, installed height however we want to. We've got the full design logic with the widget there, so we can use a formula or whatever we want to to, to do that installation. Good, so this is the modernized one, and again, we've saved that into the part, and now forevermore that will that will be in there. Uh, let's look at the hose, similarly, right? So a hose here again, we've not yet updated this one. You see we we're still getting the old properties here. And uh, again, we can come into our tools, into our parts and features, and deform, and we can do this conversion. This again is gonna happen very quickly, <laughs> and uh, it's done, and, uh, and now when we double click here, Again, this is going to launch us into Template Studio Author, and we can go configure the user interface now for this, this one as well. Here, you'll notice that instead of that white to resolve references box, we now have a, a modern regular selection widget here. We're choosing a guide curve uh, here for our tube, uh, so we can do that in here as well. This is uh, because it's part of this tube feature, it's created a group here for us. Uh, we can do a similar thing here if we want to call this parameters or, or something else. And uh, in our guide here, uh, it's referring to a tube 7, which is not necessarily what we're going to be when we do this. So what we could do is change this to say something like, uh, like select guide curve, for instance. And, uh, and that will show uh, our end user then uh, this prompt as we're uh, inside the dialog. Okay. Again, this one's already in a group, so that looks correct for a, a modern NX dialog. And here again, we can say finish, and uh, that'll that'll bring us back out here, and we can save this. And here again, we can go and add this to our assembly now. And as we do that, uh, this guy, 
we'll notice now that we get that modern UI uh, for this this uh, deformable component. And so yeah, we can use that to uh, to put it into our assembly. So again, uh, switching these to the moving these to the modern framework is going to get us an editable definition that's new uh, out there. Uh, it's also going to give us all the flexibility uh, of being able to design this UI, right? And be able to put it into uh, choose any of the presentation styles that we uh, we like for uh, a particular input. We can organize this dialog how we want. Previously, the, the parameters were all grouped at the top, or expressions were all grouped at the top, and the geometric references were all grouped at the bottom uh, in an automated way. But we can set up groups, set up separators, add images and labels and, and action buttons to do some various things inside these dialogues in a very, very freeform way. Again, using the same authoring framework here that we use for product templates and for feature templates inside NX. So, uh, again, common authoring environment there now, uh, very consistent way that we can build these various uh, flavors of templates. Okay, so hope you find that useful.